Well, guess what, everyone? There is yet again some drama in conservative media, and I couldn't resist talking about it a little bit. This time around, we're talking about The Daily Wire and Steven Crowder. Let's go ahead and get started. So hello everyone and welcome back to Grace Nerd. My name is Eric if you're new to the channel. If you enjoy commentary on culture from a Christian worldview and occasional conversation about conservatism and things like that, then make sure you go ahead and leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when new projects like this get uploaded. So if you've clicked on this video, you might already kind of be aware of this situation. Recently, Steven Crowder basically finished up his contract with The Blaze and he was apparently sort of looking around for a new place to land and all of us were sort of waiting to see how that was going to work out. However, just basically a couple of days ago, or actually it might have been yesterday as of the recording of this video, Steven Crowder released a video where he talked about stopping what he called the big con. He then proceeded to show a potential contract he was offered with an unnamed conservative media company where he really didn't like the terms of the contract. There were several things he pointed out that he said he had an issue with in terms of the control they would have over his creations, but the biggest thing that he pointed out was the apparent way from his perspective that this conservative media company would basically do the bidding of big tech. And what he pointed out were instances in the contract where it basically said that if he were to be demonetized by a major social media platform, then that would ultimately result in him losing money out of his salary, basically. Think about this for a second. Those in charge, the big conservative, the big con, and it really is the biggest con going right now, they're making it known in their contracts that they will enforce the guidelines of big tech and punish conservatives on their behalf. Don't, don't, hey, don't, don't worry, Wojcicki. Uh, these, trust me, these conservatives will stay in line. If they get demonetized, we take away 25% of their operating budget. Take another 20% away if they get a hard strike. Hey, don't worry, Zuckerberg. We've got your back. Hope to see you at the UFC Apex. And so he characterized this basically as an open invitation for anyone who wanted to boycott him or cause demonetization on a platform. That would be a signal to people who would oppose the conservative worldview. It would be a signal to them that they could go ahead and carry out these boycotts and cause these demonetizations. And it basically is an effective tactic. Now, right off the bat, a lot of people saw this video and they immediately began to speculate on who this online conservative media company might be. And there really aren't that many options if you think about it. Of course, the Daily Wire's name came up. And one of the comments under Steven Crowder's video came from Tim Poole and he went on to do his show that night and talked about how he didn't, necessarily know for certain where this contract came from or who the company was that they were talking about. But he ultimately concluded, actually, if you read the contract and think it through and think about how business operates, there aren't necessarily really any bad guys in this situation. But ultimately, he did side with Crowder and say, no, he shouldn't sign that contract. Ultimately, the way that conservatives do business in the future needs to be different. But he pointed out that really, if you're familiar with how this kind of contract negotiation works, nothing in the wording of the contract was actually all that unique or different or scandalous. But of course, tempers were heated in the comment sections of these videos, and that's to be expected. What made me want to make this video was that tonight, literally about an hour ago, Jeremy Boring of The Daily Wire came out and said, actually, yes, this contract did come from us. This did come from The Daily Wire. He then took about an hour and he walked through the contract and he read pretty much the entire thing. And in my opinion, I think he did a really good job with it. What stood out to me in his presentation was that he pointed out some ways that actually Steven Crowder was a little bit disingenuous in the way that he read and explained the contract. One of the secondary issues that Steven Crowder pointed out was the way that they talked about the work that was required of him and the penalties that would result in him not producing the content that was promised. For instance, not producing the number of shows that were required. Steven Crowder then went on basically a rant and he talked about, you know, like, what if I get into a bike accident? What if I get sick? What if X, Y, or Z happen? 
And he's basically imploring young new creators not to sign these kinds of contracts because of these kinds of dangers. Jeremy Boring then just turned a page or two forward in the contract when he was talking about this complaint from Crowder. And he pointed out that there were provisions in the actual document for situations like that, like sickness or injury or disability or things like that. But again, rightfully so, Jeremy Boring focused down, I think, on what Stephen Crowder's major complaint was. And he really gave a much more realistic vision of why these kinds of penalties might exist in a contract like this that result from things like demonetization or boycotts. He basically pointed out that, look, if you are going to lose like most or all of your advertising revenue, then that's money that the Daily Wire is losing. And that's money that the Daily Wire then cannot pay someone like Steven Crowder. If 50% of the money that he's making from advertisers is suddenly gone, and we're not able to replace that revenue within 90 days, then his fee will be reduced by 25% until such time as the ad revenue has been restored for a period of 90 days, and then it would all reset. Stephen says, all the left does is boycott our advertisers, so this just says to the left, uh, your boycotts work and we'll enforce it for you. We will punish the content creator for you. But this isn't about punishing the content creator. This is about if the Daily Wire is going to leverage, I can't say, I can't stress it, probably a hundred million dollars by the time you have marketing and infrastructure costs, by the time you pay for all the legal compliance, all the technology that it takes to support Stephen Show and Stephen Show, even at the price that we offered for it, which he would have wanted much more, at least a hundred million dollars. Uh, obviously, if the show makes dramatically less money, well, then Stephen has to make less money because we're making less money. And so as passionate as we want to be in fighting against these boycotts and fighting against all of these kinds of demonetization events and things like that, ultimately that really is taking away money. And it's not only a loss for someone like Steven Crowder, it would be a loss for someone like the Daily Wire. You can't pay money that doesn't exist. And this is the point where Jeremy Boring pointed out what he believed to be uh, a disingenuous side to what Steven Crowder was saying. Most of us know at this point that Steven Crowder is demonetized on YouTube. And this is something that Steven Crowder pointed out. But we also know that there is a portion of his show that he still doesn't show on YouTube. He basically does his regular show on YouTube. And then he says, now let's go over to Mug Club where I'm going to really uncensor myself. And you can tell, even though he is edgy on YouTube, he still is very calculated. And he saves his much more unfiltered words for his own platform. And so he understands already and practices this idea of being calculated, but saying as much as you can on the wider platform and then funneling people to your own uncensored platform. And Jeremy Boring pointed out that this is the kind of carefulness that he was talking about when he was structuring this contract with Steven Crowder. And this was an idea, this funneling idea. This is something that Jeremy Boring was already applying if you are watching the creators across the Daily Wire. You say, well, it's the same in the end anyway, because you're still telling him, if you say something YouTube doesn't like, we're taking away your money. Well, no, if, if YouTube would be the one taking away the money. We're just saying that we can't bear the entire brunt of that. But it's even, I think what Stephen's uh, suggesting here is kind of even more disingenuous than that because I actually kind of came up with this whole concept by watching Stephen Crowder. I mean, I mentioned it before. Stephen created this idea of piss off YouTube segment at Mug Club. And I saw it and thought it was genius. What does it mean? It means Stephen can go on YouTube, speak to a huge audience. In fact, most of his audience, that's where they engage with him, right? The subscribers are a very small percentage of Stephen's audience. Mug Club is a very small percentage of his audience. YouTube is the vast, overwhelming majority of Stephen's audience. Uh, he can go on there and he can be risque and he can, he can do what he wants to do, but he, but he can be calculated too. And he can say, there are some things that I simply can't say here because these bastards hate free speech. For those things, come over to Mug Club and become a subscriber. And then for 30 minutes a day at the blaze, he could say whatever he wanted. And I thought that was a genius thing. And I implemented it at Daily Wire because I was inspired by Stephen, who again, very talented guy, very smart guy. This is just meant to say the same thing. Hey, I want you to be thoughtful about what you say on the free part of the show. Doesn't mean I want you to say things that aren't true. Doesn't mean I want you to say things you don't believe. Doesn't mean I want you to bend the knee to big tech. What it means is I want you to preserve the revenue as best you can, preserve the audience as best you can, 
and then tell people there's a reason we're building these multi, 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 multi million dollar platforms. Uh, there's a reason we have subscribers. It's so that there is a place where they can't take our voice away. They're very strict in the way that they structure their shows. They don't say anything they don't believe and they don't ultimately withhold their actual opinions, but they are careful and then they save their uncensored content for behind a paywall. And so what Steven Crowder is actually criticizing The Daily Wire for is something that he came up with and The Daily Wire is actually using as a model, at least to a large extent. And so this is an unfortunate situation, I'll say. I mean, I can already see looking at the comment sections between these two videos that tempers are high in both fan bases. It's really, you know, an unfortunate situation. And I think I've kind of let my opinion on the matter slip and I don't really care. Uh, honestly, I think that the Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring in particular, being transparent in this way, I think he showed a lot of maturity and a lot of transparency. And people in the comment sections are accusing him of gaslighting, but ultimately they're, they're not interacting at all with the arguments he made or the information he presented. It's pretty clear they didn't even watch the entirety of the video. And so I imagine there could be some quibbles in the comment section of different opinions about this and, you know, have at it, I suppose. Lively comment sections uh, definitely uh, only help the video, but, you know, I, I do want to know your opinion. I, I honestly think the issue is pretty clear here. Maybe Tim Pool has a point and in the future we'll be moving past contracts like this, but so long as there are these massive big tech platforms where censorship is kind of unavoidable, and so long as we're in this slow process of building our own platforms, there is going to be this sort of negotiation trying to funnel people to where we can truly say what we believe and being calculated but still truthful in the places where this censorship does exist. And so again, it's an unfortunate situation, but those are my thoughts. Make sure that you share your own thoughts below. I'd love to know what you think. Uh, ultimately, I still am a fan of The Daily Wire. And honestly, as bad as The Daily Wire was temporarily made to look in this situation, in the end, they've actually come out looking even better in my eyes. And I think that will be the case for anyone who looks at this in a rational way and is honest about the nature of the way things are on the internet these days, at least until conservatives get a greater and greater foothold and truly gain more and more power on the platforms that they build for themselves. So again, those are my thoughts, and uh, I hope you were helped by them, at least in some measure. Again, my name is Eric, this is Grace Nerd, and I hope to see you around at the next one. Talk to you later.